So at this point, we have the floor plan basically colored in, if you will. So we have the, the original outline, and now we have a bunch of layers set up that have individual types of things colored in. So we have layers for walls, windows, floors, individual pieces of furniture, or sometimes they're in groups if they're very plain. Uh, we have you know, the bedspreads, the, the pillows, and all of that type of thing, and they're all on individual layers. And really, at this point, maybe you think, I'm done, this is all I want to do, and that would be totally fine. But if you want to get a little bit uh, fancier, add a little bit more detail, realism, a little bit of depth, what we want to go, do, go through and do is add some shadows, some highlights, and things like that. We're going to do that just a little bit differently than we've been using layers up until this point. So if we take a look at the layers palette, we'll see that we have these fill and adjustment layers. So we have the little thumbnail on the left in the layer, this little link symbol, and then a mask showing what's selected. And remember, we got those by going down to this black and white cookie, the filler adjustment button at the bottom, and either picking solid color or pattern. Take note that there's a lot of other options here that we're not using at this point, because we're keeping things pretty simple. What I want to do now, though, is actually create just plain blank layers to add some more painterly types of highlights and things like that. So to start out, I might think, well, we have all this furniture sitting on the floor. Why don't we add some shadows you know, around the bed, around the sofa, maybe the edges of walls and things like that? What I'm going to do is use Photoshop's selection methods to make my job a little bit easier. If I just went in and colored as it is, I'd have to be very, very careful. But using the layers that I have set up, I can go in and very quickly add some detail. So the first one I'm going to do is on the main wood floor. Okay, so in my layers menu, I'm going to go to my main floor layer, and that's this big wooden portion here. What I can do is very, very easily select out of my layers menu. I hold on the control key and click over the thumbnail of the layer mask. So not the thumbnail that shows me the little pattern symbol, but the thumbnail that shows me the actual outline of the floor, if you will. When I hold control and click on that thumbnail, it gives me a marquee around everything on that layer. So whether or not things are actually connected, it doesn't matter, it grabs everything that's on that layer. It's really, really handy. Now what I'm going to do is come down to the bottom of the layers palette and click on the new layer button. It's right next to the trash can. Notice this layer looks different than the other ones we've created. Once again, it's just a plain blank layer. There's nothing going on there. What I'll do is rename that something that makes more sense. So maybe I'll name it main floor. So maybe MF and dash shadows. Okay, I want to do this on a separate layer so that I can always go back and adjust, make changes, change the blending layer and things like that. If I just do it directly on top of the other layer, it's going to be stuck there basically. Once I have that ready, what I want to do is decide what color I might like my layer, uh, my layer, yeah, my shadows to be. So I will come down to the bottom of the toolbox and click the foreground color to open up the color picker. Once I'm in there, I can definitely, you know, kind of eyeball and pick a color, or I could use an eyedropper to give me a starting point based on my floor color. Because maybe I really just want to do a darker version of that. I would encourage you to avoid using um, just a plain gray or something like that because that can really create kind of a, a dirty, ashy look when you're doing your renderings and it's generally not a very good idea. So often using a darker version of the color that you have is at least a good place to start. So maybe I'll grab you know this really deep brown here, say okay, and now I'm ready to get started. There's different ways to work with shadows, and I think the two best ways, or two of the easiest ways anyway, are to either use a gradient or a paintbrush, and I'll actually use both in this demonstration. So first, a gradient, it's located in our toolbox, and it's under the same button as the paint bucket tool. 
So the gradient button looks like this. All right, it's underneath of the eraser. When I have a gradient selected, if I look up at the top of my screen, I'll see that my contextual menu up here changed. This first box shows me the type of gradient I have. If I click on this little arrow, I can see that Photoshop comes with a variety of different types of gradients already installed, you know, rainbows and things like that. The one I really want to use right now is the second one in, and it's going from our foreground color to that gray and white checker. So that's going from a color to transparent. That's what I want. Then, to get out of there, I just clicked outside. I can pick, you know, what kind of gradient I want. For what I'm doing, I'm going to pick the second one over, a radial gradient. So it's basically going to make big fuzzy circles is really the idea. We can change blending modes up here and the opacity. Okay, so if we want to, for example, make this softer and lighter, we can do that up here. Or if you want, you can do that later in the layers palette, which is what I'll do. So just so you can see what this looks like, if I click on my floor plan and pull the mouse out, we'll see that there's a rubber banding effect with this little line. Let's click and pull that out. And when I let go, you'll see it makes this kind of fuzzy um, dot or cloud or something like that. I'm just going to do Control Z to undo that. So what I can do is actually go outside of my selection, but start dragging and pulling in these soft, um, you know, shadowy areas. So in the corners, for example, maybe in the closet, I can start filling in where it might be a little bit more shaded to give a little bit of depth to my floor plan. So you can work your way all around. You can go underneath pieces of furniture and just notice that it's only happening on the selected areas. So I don't have weird, um, you know, gradients and things happening all over the place. All right. So you can definitely, you know, spend a lot of time getting that just right. But what we can also do is use this in conjunction with a paintbrush if I wanted to do some, you know, straight lines or things like that. So I'll just go up and grab the paintbrush tool. It's a few buttons up, just the paintbrush, but I'm probably going to want to go in and make some adjustments to the type of brush I have. So once again, up at the top, this menu has changed. Now it's a paintbrush, not relating to the gradient at all. I'll click this little arrow and actually change my brush settings. So if I want to do a soft type of shadow, I definitely don't want a really hard edge brush. What I want is something you know, really soft and kind of like an airbrush. And notice that when it's really, really hard, it's at 100%. And you can have any variation between all the way down to zero where it's very soft and fluffy. We can also change the size, and I can take a look at my size if I move my mouse over, to something a little, a little bit bigger. And maybe I think something like this is looking good. Okay. Then I can come in with a paintbrush and actually draw these types of things. Now if I look at that, oh no, that's pretty terrible. Okay, so maybe I want to go in and, you know, make that just a little smaller. Okay, but what I can also do is actually click my mouse, then hold the shift key so I can draw a straight line along the edge, just like that. Okay, so you can see that I'm getting a nice shadow along that edge. I might undo that and take the opacity down a little bit to lighten that up so it's not quite so heavy. So we can make our way around and add shadows where we think that they might make sense. And just keep in mind that um, you'll want to pay attention to where your windows are in the space and, uh, you know, make sure that your shadows make sense, that you don't have, you know, shadows in front of the windows and light coming out of the corner, uh, which wouldn't make sense unless you had a lamp, something like that, and you're trying to create that type of effect. Okay. So you can make your way all the way around, and once you're done, if you want to just deselect that area, we can do Control D, and you'll see that, you know, especially over here where I did a little more, we're getting some nice shadows in this space. Well, we can do the same thing with adding some highlights. So I am going to just reselect by Control and clicking on that floor plan thumbnail. 
So I have that selected again. I'll make a new layer, and this one I might call Main Floor Highlights. Once I do that, I can come in and pick perhaps more of a yellow or something like that to make highlights coming in the space. I can use the paintbrush and the gradient tool again and go through the same process. But this time, what I might do is actually have, um, you know, these nice highlights coming in right by the windows. We could also do the same effect if we wanted to have light around a lamp or something like that, for example. So, you know, what I'll do is just bring this color in by each window. Okay, maybe it'll be a little dramatic, but that's okay. And notice, you know, as I'm doing that, it's a little bit intense and we're obscuring the floor a little bit. And the same thing really happened with the shadows. Well, what we can do is change the blending properties of the layer. So I have the highlights layer selected. If I come up to the top of the layers menu, right here this button says normal. If you click on this arrow, you see that there's a whole bunch of options. And I encourage you to play around with these. But one we might try in terms of the highlights would be overlay. When we change that to overlay, notice that these highlighted areas look more like sun actually washing across the floor instead of, you know, like dust or powder or something like that. If I highlight the shadows layer and come up where it says normal, I might change it to something like multiply. And when I change it to multiply, first notice it gets darker, but it actually allows us to see through the gradients and the brush strokes. Instead of obscuring the floor pattern underneath, it actually lets us see that through there. Since it makes it darker, however, I might want to go in and take the opacity on that layer down or go through with a soft, um, you know, low opacity eraser and kind of erase away at areas that are too sharp or too dark or something like that. But as you do this, make your way through each section of the flooring so that you have shadows around this, the toilet, the washer and dryer, the pieces of furniture and things like that. And it will really add a lot of depth to your rendering.